Hi everyone and welcome to Ask Dr. Amy. Today we're going to talk about jaundice in newborns. This video is for educational purposes only and without knowing you or your child it cannot be used as medical advice, but I hope it helps you. The word jaundice describes a yellowish color, usually most visible in the skin and the whites of the eyes. In adults, jaundice is never normal. In newborns, it's certainly possible to have jaundice that's pathologic, meaning related to disease, but the overwhelming majority of cases is physiologic jaundice, which means it's a result of normal bodily functions in the first days of life. This video is mainly about the normal physiologic jaundice. Now, as we talk about this process, I'm going to keep a running list over here of things that increase the risk of physiologic normal jaundice just so we can keep track as we go along. So first question, where does the yellow pigmentation come from? All of us have red blood cells in our bloodstream, also called RBCs, which go through a normal recycling process where they get made in the bone marrow, they circulate in the blood to bring oxygen to our tissues, and then eventually they die. When the RBCs die, they release a byproduct called bilirubin. And bilirubin is what causes the yellow pigment. Now at this point, this unprocessed bilirubin is also called indirect or unconjugated bilirubin. They mean the same thing, just two different ways of saying it. So if bilirubin is the cause of jaundice, then it makes sense that whatever increases the rate of breakdown for the red blood cells would then also increase the amount of bilirubin and cause jaundice. So we come to our first risk factor here in normal newborn physiology which is when mothers have type O blood, which by the way is the most common blood group among people. When mothers are type O, there's a chance for having a Coombs reaction, which is a minority, but it's possible. I don't want to get into too much of the nitty gritty details here, but basically people with type O blood have more circulating antibodies in the plasma that could possibly attack another person's blood. So because of the mixture of blood here in the newborn, during birth, it can cause a temporary increase in the rate of breakdown in the baby's red blood cells, leading to jaundice. Now, type O is definitely not the only type of this reaction happening. The plus here in the O positive refers to the Rh factor, and a mismatch of that can also lead to this, as well as a number of other antibodies we don't even know about. The point is, Sometimes newborns have heightened recycling of their red blood cells because of maternal antibodies. But in a few days, the maternal antibodies are gone from the baby's body. That's why it's temporary. Now going forward in our assembly line, taking care of this bilirubin is the liver strap, which conjugates it to make it from indirect to direct, also called conjugated. We're not gonna go very deep into this concept right now, but just remember that the liver processes bilirubin so it can be excreted. So having said that, whatever decreases the liver's ability to do this will then increase the indirect bilirubin. It would also, of course, decrease the amount of direct down here, but that's not as important right now because it's the increase here that's causing more jaundice. So what makes the liver function suboptimally? The answer is just being a newborn. The liver takes a few days to ramp up to the full function. However, it takes much longer in premature babies, and that is another risk factor for us to consider here. Now from here, the direct bilirubin is eventually excreted from our body in two ways, either through the kidneys, which make urine, or through the bowels, which make stool. Again, this is a very simplistic, functional way of looking at this nuanced system. Another place where this assembly line can be slowed down is if there's not much going through the gut here. The gut needs stuff in it to bring the bilirubin out. And the stool, which is made yellow by the bilirubin, takes a while to move through the newborn's gut because first they have to poop out the meconium. That's that sticky black stuff that comes out before the baby transitions to have normal stool on days three to five-ish. Now meconium is not necessarily a risk factor for jaundice, but a baby that's still stooling meconium and hasn't transitioned yet tells us that the bilirubin is not able to exit through the gut yet. So another relevant point here having to do with the digestive system is a pure concentration issue. If we look at our bloodstream, which has bilirubin in it, dehydration or decreasing the volume of liquid in there would increase bilirubin concentration, simple chemistry. 
Because of that, breastfeeding is actually also a risk factor for newborn jaundice. Now, obviously, breastfeeding is very good for the baby, and I recommend it for the families who have the option. Breast is best. This is certainly not a reason to not breastfeed, but just take note that breast milk often takes some time to come in, and the volume might not be so big in the beginning. And the baby has to work on latching. And sometimes it's a little bit takes a bit of time to get it established. So breastfed babies are more likely to get dehydrated. Among other things, it can make jaundice worse. So for jaundice in general, both direct and indirect bilirubin will make you yellow. But for normal physiologic newborn jaundice, it should be mostly indirect bilirubin because remember we have more breakdown for RBCs and a sluggish liver, so it's all pre-liver congestion in the traffic. We should not have direct hyperbilirubinemia, or which means high direct bilirubin, ever. If a baby had this, we worry that a problem exists in the excretion system, how the transportation to the gut is problematic. This can mean a serious anatomical issue, and we need further workup. Now, infection is also a very serious reason that can cause jaundice, so the doctors are always ruling out infection in the newborn if there's a concern. And lastly, normal newborn jaundice should be self-limiting and should resolve in days. So why do we care? So they get a little yellow in a few days; it'll get better. What's the big deal? The reason is a condition called chronicturus. Which thankfully we don't see very much anymore in the U.S. due to routine monitoring of bilirubin level. Chronicturus is when the buildup of bilirubin gets so high that it causes permanent neurosensory damage. It's a truly heartbreaking condition because an otherwise normal newborn baby, if they got chronicturus, could become deaf or have permanent brain damage. Now we have listed some common risk factors here among normal babies, but. This can happen to anybody, even if they don't have any of these risk factors. So screening should always be universal. To make sure we don't get chronicturus, we have a chart here that helps us decide when to treat this. We tolerate different numbers based on the risk profile of the baby. The lowest risk group here are those above 38 weeks, looking well, low chance of infection, all is well. The next group here is the medium risk profile, and then the highest risk profile. You see, we tolerate a much lower number. So the pediatrician in the nursery is constantly using this chart to know when to treat. Now, if the level gets high enough, but still very far from chronicturus, given that we're very conservative with this decision, I'm going to draw a blue light bulb here to represent phototherapy, which is when we put the baby under that blue light. Now, we don't actually know 100% why this works, and the method was actually discovered accidentally. But somehow the blue wavelength of light through the skin can turn the bilirubin into a form that can be eliminated better through urine. So that buys the baby time for the liver to ramp up, helping him or her pee it out and safely get through those first few days if the numbers are climbing too high for us to be comfortable with. So there you have it: a quick overview on newborn jaundice. Again, is very common and with early detection should not have any permanent consequences. It is just a normal part of being a newborn. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or want to see a video on a different topic, please leave me a comment. Let me know, and we'll see you next time.